What's up, Eastside Youth? Hope you guys are doing well. Um, this is our, our midweek uh, kind of encouragement video. Hope you guys are, are enjoying kind of the cooler day today. It's supposed to get really hot um, by the next time we meet together on Sunday. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, enjoy the cooler air while you can. Um, for those of you who I might not have seen yet, uh, we're going to be meeting uh, Sunday, normal time, 4 o'clock. Uh, and then after the lesson, we're going to go outside, do a little fire pit, roast some hot dogs, um, and have a time of worship and spend some time with Bethany as her kind of celebration going away. Thank you, party. Um, and so that will be um, this Sunday after the lesson. Uh, yeah, and then we, we've we got a few things coming up, but I'll let you know more about those when we get them more finalized. Uh yeah, let's hop right in here. Um, we're in Galatians chapter 3 this week. We're going to be starting in chapter 3. Um, and just, as always, just to give you guys a little reminder of what's going on, uh, Paul is writing to the Galatian church. And one of the things that had started to happen with the Galatian church is there was a, a camp of people who were trying to teach or tell the Galatians that they had to be circumcised, that they had to follow um, a, a Jewish practice from the Old Testament in order to truly become the people of God, um, to, or in other words, to truly be saved. And Paul comes on the scene, he's like, no, that's false gospel, that's a mess, and no. Uh, last week, we talked about Paul Paul saying, like, we're, we're justified by faith alone. It doesn't matter what you do, you can't work your way, you can't keep the law good enough in order to be saved. And so it's only through faith in Jesus that a person enters into a saving relationship with God and, and becomes a part of the people of God. Um, and so this week, uh, Paul is going to kind of flip that idea, not on its head, but he's going to stick it into these, these people who are saying, no, 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 if you really want to be the Jewish people, you have to, you have to um, do this uh, uh, act of circumcision in order to be the people of God. Uh, Paul's going to kind of go on the offensive now and say, well, wait a minute, that isn't even, that's not even what it took back then, really. Um, it, it was a product of a system. Um, and so uh, let's start out Galatians chapter three. Uh, Paul says, oh, foolish Galatians, who's bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain? If indeed it was in vain, does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Know then that it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. All right, so um, here, what, what we're, this, kind of, this, this week is kind of two sections. First is Paul's argument that... Um, if they've begun a work by the, the work of the Spirit in their life, why would they think that they need to stop having that work completed by the Holy Spirit in their life? And then the second part of this week is um, this bit about Abraham and the people of God and Paul calling back like, hey, this, is, this has been God's plan from the beginning. Uh, and so we're going to look at both those. The first is this idea that that um, the Spirit has begun. It says, let me ask you this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? It's a rhetorical question. The expected answer is that they received the Spirit by hearing with faith. Um, so in other words, in, in the book of Acts, you can read about how the Spirit began to come on early Christians um, and, and they would they would accept, believe in Jesus Christ, respond in faith, and then they would receive the Holy Spirit. And so Paul is saying, did you do anything when that happened? Like, were you trying really hard? Were you helping, you know, somebody cross the street? Were you were you raking, the, you know, were, what were you doing when you received that? Or did you just have faith and the Spirit became a part of your life? And, and 
he's getting at, but the second is true. Like they, all they did was responded in faith. And so he goes on to say is, so if you've begun by the spirit, so if you started out by the spirit, having received the spirit in faith, um, are you now being perfected by the flesh? In other words, once you have the spirit in your life, are you now saying that you can become more like Christ by just working really hard and keeping the law? Or are you going to acknowledge that it's only through the work of the spirit in your life to produce Christ likeness that is going to change your behavior, your actions, your motives, those things moving forward. Um, in other words, he's saying, if you have been saved by faith alone and received the spirit by faith alone, by believing in Christ, you're going to be sanctified by the same means. It's going to be the working of the spirit in your life through faith. Um, so did you suffer so many things in vain? Does he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by the works of the law or by faith? In other words, um, does does God like sit there with the you know with the Holy Spirit and say no 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 don't you can't you can't go to them unless they do this thing you you cannot go be with this Christian until they do X Y and Z that is not the case when a person puts their faith in Jesus they receive the Holy Spirit and and that manifests itself in in spiritual gifts. Um, that manifests itself in um, a, a, a desire to seek God, a desire to um, pursue the things of Christ. And we talked about that a little bit um, when we were going through Deuteronomy about how God's saying, like, love and obey. It goes hand in hand. If you love God, you will care about the things of God. Um, and so then Moses, or sorry, to not Moses, different guy. Uh, Paul goes from talking about the spirit and he transitions to talking about the Old Testament and Abraham. And he says, just as Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. In other words, Abraham did not live a righteous life, and that is why he was chosen by God. Rather, God said to Abraham, I want you to pack up shop and go to another country, and trust me that I'm going to give you a land someday. And he did so. <clears throat> and then uh, Paul here says that it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. In other words, those who have put their faith in Jesus, who trust God for their salvation, they are the true sons of Abraham. Um, the, the Jewish people and the people who were likely telling the Galatians, hey, y'all need to be circumcised in order to be the people of God. Here, Paul is telling them, maybe y'all don't have it right. Maybe you guys are less children of Abraham than those who are just merely responding in faith to God. And remember, Paul is a Jew. He, he grew up Jewish. He was all in on Judaism. He was having Christians put to death because he was so on board for Judaism. And to have this guy say now, you know, those who are responding to Jesus in faith might be more so children of Abraham than we are. That's big. Um, that's a that's a big shift in thinking. The scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham saying, in you shall the nations be blessed. And we talked about that verse. That verse is in, um, sorry, I want to get this right and make sure that, that we have it. Uh, that, that verse is in Genesis 13 and again in Genesis 17. Um, but it's this idea that when God told Abraham, I'm going to bless all the nations of the world through you, that is realized in Christ. And in Galatians, Paul talks about how he's realizing that that idea that God is going to bless the nations through this one family of Abraham is realized in the person of Christ when we put our faith in Jesus. Jesus descended from all these guys and, and the people of Israel, and it all comes down and it is, is realized in Jesus. That is how God blesses the nations of the world, is through this, this person who can pay for sin and provide a relationship with God. That's it. Um, and so then those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Uh, and so Paul here is kind of turning it on its head. For these guys and he's like you know you're so sure that you are telling these gentiles that they need to do this thing to show they have faith and paul says actually like maybe they're the ones that are in the right and y'all need to do something to get on board with this faith yourselves um yeah it's it's paul on on kind of getting more um hands-on with his his approach to these these folks who are teaching a false gospel um but yeah 
That is Galatians 3, uh, 1 through 9. We'll continue this next week. I hope you guys are doing well. Hang in there. You know, I know stuff with the virus is, is moving slow right now. Um, and especially as you guys look towards school starting up um, and what that's going to look like. Um, just hang in there. Be patient. Uh, and just, just you know, keep your eyes on um, what God has for you right now and what he has for you moving into the next school year. Um, those of you who have graduated or, or graduated years past or moving on to the next stage of life, what he has for you in that. Um, because when you, when you get your eyes focused on, you know, that goal of what God has for you, it, it makes a lot of the stuff that's going on, not easier, but, um, some of the uncertainty is a little, little, um, you're more well equipped to navigate it. So, uh, we love you guys. We're looking forward to seeing you again on Sunday and, uh, yeah, take care. Enjoy the, enjoy the cool day. Bye guys.